Let's talk about how to prepare your film for development. First things first, if you're shooting 35mm film, shoot all of your film. And then find the rewind release button on your camera. You may have to hold it down. And then turn the film rewind lever on your camera. So what you're doing here is you are reeling the film back into its canister so that it's safe from light again. You'll feel a tug at the end, which is the film coming free from the camera's reel. And then keep reeling it in, and you should feel the same pattern once it enters the canister. Open your camera, take out your roll. Put it in the canister. If you're shooting 120, same idea. Reel your film all the way up into the take-up spool. Open up the camera, take out the roll. Lick the seal like an envelope. Wrap the film back up. You can also use tape, but the point is you want to keep it light tight before developing it. Put the film into a bubble mailer and ship it off to your lab of choice. The end. But if you're gonna be your own lab like me, this is what you really need. You need some exposed film. You need a pair of scissors. Can opener is optional. You need a daylight developing tank, which is a light tight tank that keeps light from entering, but also allows liquids to pour in. And you'll need reels for that tank, which will either be 35 sized or 120 size. There are two main types of daylight tanks. There's stainless steel tanks, which I use, and also plastic tanks. The reason I like stainless steel development tanks better is they take about half of the amount of liquid to develop the same amount of film. In a plastic tank, you need a whole liter to develop just two rolls of 35mm film, but with a stainless steel tank, you can develop two rolls with half a liter, or 500 milliliters. You'll also need a pitch black room, which is a room that has zero light anywhere. Even like a tiny bit of light from coming from under the door can fog your film. I recommend getting a dark bag. It's a light tight bag, looks like a t-shirt, that allows you to put all of your film, your scissors, your tank inside the bag, and your arms can fit through these sleeves and do everything in the dark there. Dark bags are really good if you don't have a dark room or if you don't have a room that you can make pitch black very easily. They're also very portable. You can bring them almost anywhere. So everything after this point has to happen in the dark. If you can ever see your film before you develop it, then the film is ruined. The only reason I'm doing this in the light here is so that you can see what's actually going on inside the dark bag or in the dark room. So the point of this process is to get the film from the canister onto a reel so that the developing chemicals can touch every single part of the film. The spirals in this reel keep the film separated perfectly so that the chemicals can touch every part of the film. And once we put that in this canister and close the lid, light can no longer reach the film to damage it until after we develop it. So for 35mm film, you're going to take your canister, and you can use, optionally, a can opener to take the top off of the can. This is good for if you want to reuse this canister for bulk loading, but what I usually do is I find the split where the light trap is, use my finger to wedge it open, and I keep pulling it more and more until I just open the side. Again, this is happening in the dark. So you want to find the tongue, and then you want to cut off this little edge right here. You want to cut it as straight as you can. It's not going to be perfect in the dark, but close enough is good. So then I like to keep the film in the canister, and I sort of pinch the edges of the film like this. So I take my reel, and I make sure that the ends of the spiral are pointing up on my left side. So in my left hand, the spiral's going this way. With my film, the film is going this way. And I find the clip on the spiral and hook the film into that clip. I try and keep that pinch. Just start winding with my left hand the reel. This way the film doesn't go crazy in my right hand. There are other ways to do this, but I found that this is the neatest way and I don't have to touch most of the film. 
So if you're shooting Fujifilm, the film will be hooked into a hook on the spindle. But if you're shooting Kodak, you'll have tape attaching the film to the spindle. In the dark, it might be a little hard, but you're going to want to cut off as much tape as you can. If you have any tape left, the tape can come off in the developer, which can be bad if the tape decides to attach itself to somewhere else on your film. So once it's on the reel, take it, put it in your canister, secure the lid tightly, and now you're ready to develop your film. So with 120, it's the same idea. You unwrap your film, unwrap the roll until you can see the film motion itself and take your reel in the same way. Make sure the teeth are going up on your left side. Find your clip. I like to pinch it just like with 35 millimeter. There you go. Find the clip. Start spiraling. You're gonna to wanna to keep your right hand a little loose so that you can allow the film to come off the spool. Once you're at the end, this is really important. Your film is going to be attached to the backing paper by some tape. Now you want to be very slow and careful when you're removing this tape. I have found that if you start removing the tape too quickly, static can discharge, which can cause sparks. And these sparks will leave bright spots on your film, which is not a good thing. So you want to do it nice and slowly. Secure the lid tightly. Now you're ready to develop your film. Now like I said, all this has to happen in the dark. It's a good idea to practice this with some scrap film until you can do it with your eyes closed. So buy a cheap roll of Fuji at Walmart, sacrifice it to the daylight, try and spool it on. Practice will make it so much easier. Today I sacrificed some old Kodak 800 from 2003 and some T-Max 100 from 2001 to show you guys how to do this. At least it's expired. Yes, I did waste it, because you can still get images with these films. But may they rest in peace. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more film tutorials, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.